In this video, we'll add a spike shooter as an enemy in our game. It will shoot spikes towards our player in an attempt to damage them. So let's begin. To get started, we'll need two new sprites and we'll upload them and are found in the red file in the spaceship pack from Unlucky Studio. Make sure to grab this pack if you don't yet have it, the link is in the description. And these are the two sprites we need, the communication ship and the space mine. But we'll rename them and use them for a different purpose. This is going to be called the enemy space shooter. And we can rename this to the enemy spike. There we go. Now we can go to our enemy space shooter, resize it to 50 and our enemy spike can be resized to 10. Now, let's start with our enemy spike shooter. Okay, this is named the wrong thing. This is not a space shooter, but a spike shooter. And we would need to make a few variables. First, we're going to have a variable that holds the health of our enemy spike shooter. So we can call this spike shooter health. We also want to record what direction the spike shooter is going in. So we can say spike shooter direction, just abbreviated with DIR. We can also create another one called shoot spawn spike shooter, as we did for our mothership, and then another variable called spike shooters destroy it click OK and then we want to make a variable so we can know where we want our spike shooters to spawn from so we'll call this spike X and spike Y so now we have the six variables we need for this video so we can disable all of them we don't need to see them now so we can go to events and click when i receive and we're going to create a new message to broadcast so click on the message box and we're going to call this spawn spike shooter and when i receive spike shooter we can go to our control panel and say if go to operators grab the equals to operator and go to should spawn spike shooter and if it is true if it is true then we can go to our control and wait a random amount of seconds to keep our player guessing so we can say three to five seconds and we can create a clone of the enemy spike shooter. Now, we now need to look if we've been hit by a bullet. So we go to our when I start this clone block and we look for this forever and say if and go to sensing, look if we're being touched by a bullet. Then we go to our variables and we'll change the spike shooter health by negative one. And we'll wait, we go to operators, select the multiplication operator, go to wait and bring this multiplication operator here and put this in here and get the variable fire rate multiplier. So if we're shooting faster, then we will look for more bullets being hit. So if we potentially get hit, hit by this fire rate, our player receives that, then we do want to look if we're shooting faster. Another thing we need to do is go to our enemy mothership and do that exact same change. Instead of waiting 0 0.5 seconds, we go to operators, multiply operator go to operators variables um, and then go to fire rate multiplier by 0 
now we can go to the variable right here and I did make a mistake in the last video by changing motherships destroyed by negative one we wanted to change by one so that we're adding them not decreasing the motherships destroyed so now that that's fixed we can go back to our enemy spike shooter and now we need the explosion effect which we can find in our enemy mothership so grab from the top of this repeat five times and put this in our enemy spike shooter and put it under change amount of seconds and we'll put the weight under the repeat loop and then we'll get another if statement and put this inside this repeat and look if our spike shooter's health does equal to zero then we would repeat this part so make sure to put this weight inside this if statement and put this part under the change spike shooter health by one now we need to set the spike shooter's health so let's go to a new when I start as clone block and we'll set our spike shooter's health to 10 so our spike shooter will be a stronger enemy than our mothership and then we want to show it so we'll hide it when I receive start game but show it once I start as a clone and we'll do the same thing we've done with our mothership we'll start in the middle horizontally but start at 200 on the y-axis and then we'll glide for one second to zero one two five and now we need to set up the movement of our spike shooter so first we need to grab another when I start as clone block and then we go to a forever loop and then we can go to repeat until we can do this twice outside each other and put them inside the forever loop and what we'll be repeating is if the x position is less than or greater than 180 or negative 180 so that our spike shooter can go left and right so we'll set this to 180 and set this one to negative 180 and place the x position blocks right here now we'll change x by 3 and change x by negative 3 in the second loop and then we can go to variables and set the spike shooter's direction to right since we're moving in the positive direction we just duplicate this put it under the change x and then set it to left and put this under the negative x now we can click flag just to make it disappear okay now we can work on the rotation and shooting of spikes for our spike shooter so let's go to the control panel and select the repeat loop and we'll put this right under the glide seconds and then we'll put the forever loop on top of it and say repeat 100 to 150 times so that our spike shoot is not predictable and then we go to control and select two if statements and we bring this if statements inside the repeat loop and say if our spike shooters direction and go to operators and grab the equals operator so you can just duplicate this and put the first one here and the second one here so we look if it's left or if it's right so if it's left we want to turn anti-clockwise and we find the turning buttons in the motion panel so we say turn 
anti-clockwise by 5 degrees but will turn clockwise if we're going right by 5 degrees and then we want to start moving faster we want to rotate faster if this repeat time is over so we can go to control and select the repeat put it under the first repeat loop and set this to 24 times and then we would grab another repeat loop and put it on top of the second one here and set this to five. So we'll shoot five spikes, but our rotation will happen 24 times. So we can duplicate this to if statements and change it from five to 15 for the both of them. And then we would go to variables and set the spike x and spike y and we'll put this under the repeat 24 so after we've repeated the turning would then shoot spikes towards our player so we go to motion and set spike x to x position and spike y to y position now let's create the clone of our spike and we find this in control and create a clone of the enemy spike. Now we can go to the enemy spike and write the code for what happens when we create a clone of our spike. So we can go to when I start as clone and we'll show it, but we can hide it when start game is broadcasted. Now we would go to the spike X and spike Y positions assigned earlier. And then we would want to point towards our player. This is the important part. So we point towards our player so that the spikes can come to our player. After we point towards our player, we can now start moving towards them. So we can select the forever loop and move 12.5 steps after that we'll create two more when I start as clone blocks so we can bring them here and then we go to the forever loop and put them in the first one and then get a wait until block and put it in the second one so we first want to make sure that the spikes destroy if we touch the player or touch the edge so go to operators and select the or operator and say if we're touching our player or if we're touching the edge then we would wait 0 0.05 seconds just to give the player time to register it has been hit and then we can delete this clone so we don't delete it immediately and then we can go to if statement and put it in this second when I start as clone block and say if we touch a bullet then we can set our explosion positions explosion X and explosion Y we can put them inside this if statement and set them to the X and Y position of our enemy spike. And then we can go to events or control and create a clone of the red, of the blue explosion. So we can just grab this one and wait a bit of time before we delete the spike and delete this clone so now we can go to our enemy spike shooter and get a block called stop and we'll stop all the other scripts in this sprite if our spike shooter health equals to zero so we can create this explosion effect now we need to update our bullet and player on the new enemies that can be hit or damage them. So let's zoom out. 
so that two new things we can hit so we need two or operators and then get to the touching block found in sensing and look if we're touching the enemy spike or if we're touching the enemy spike shooter and then grab the or block right here put it in here just zoom out so you can grab the whole thing and put it into the repeat until statement now we go to our player and let it know that it can be damaged by a spike so click the or operator and grab it here and put touching a spike a spike can damage us and that should be about it so go to the backdrop and instead of should spawn mothership equals to true we would set spawn spike shooter to equal to true and spawn the spike shooter now let's click the flag and start the game so we can see our spike shooters here we can hit it it will shoot spikes towards us that do damage us but not when we are in ghost mode and they do explode us and they're doing what they're supposed to and they are explodable so there we go now we have a working spike shooter so one last thing we can do is add a cooler effect for when we touch the speed boost so we can go to our player and go to when I receive speed boost power up we'll set the star speed multiplier to 1.5 and you can put this right here so our stars will then move faster once we touch the speed boost so let me just play for a bit until I get the speed boost a few moments later so now we see that our starships move faster so we can click stop and now that we know it's working let's just duplicate this and set it back to one and we can put this once we set our speed boost multiplier to one so that's it for this episode thank you for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it so make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next video and turn on post notifications so you're notified immediately when the next episode releases in our next video we'll be adding a spaceship dropper that will drop enemy spaceships into the game and they'll shoot bullets towards our player so see you for that goodbye mm -hmm.